Hey guys, welcome back. So today we have another episode of Modern Collectibles, which is the rifle I'm holding right now in my hands. But before we get into today's video, if you like our content, guys, please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to the channel because a surprisingly small number of you guys that watch our videos actually click that subscribe button. So take a moment and do that now if you enjoy the content. And also, please comment down below because we really do enjoy reading those comments and it helps us out with the algorithms. With that being said, let's get started with today's video and the BRN-10. Guys, please swing by and check out Big Daddy Unlimited BDU. They help support us here at the Military Arms Channel with products and things like that so we can continue to bring you content. There's a link in the video description down below that'll take you to the Mac blog and website. Please follow that link and from there you'll find a link to Big Daddy Unlimited and try them out just for 99 cents. You can see what they're all about. In essence, they're just like a big online store that has amazing prices. So please again, check out BDU. The BRN-10 was announced by Brownells oh, a couple of years ago, I think, at SHOT Show. And the whole retro line was something that I thought was fresh and new because we have been just worn out with just the latest and greatest in tactical doodads. And I thought it was refreshing to go back and take a look at some of the rifles that led up to the modern rifles that we all know and love and enjoy shooting today. And so the retro line, which this rifle belonged to, was something that did that. They wasn't just any one product. It was a family of products that were kind of based around, for the most part, with the exception of the BRN-180, based around the AR-10 and the AR-15 M16. The AR-10, when they brought it out, I was really, really excited about because you just don't get to shoot an original AR-10. The guns were manufactured in very small numbers. Only a few nations, very small nations, even adopted them. Um, they were manufactured for a very short time, and they're just not that common. You're going to find some of them available out there in the United States market, uh, market available as NFA items, and they're just, I mean, you could buy a car for what those things are worth. So having a rifle that is about 90% accurate in terms of authenticity like this one seemed like a pretty darn good deal to me at the time. And this rifle, I mean, has the look of the original AR-10. It has the charging handle here in the top of the carrying handle. We have the drum for the rear sight elevation back here. We have the, the bolt, hold bolt release. The contour of the grip is, is right. This is more of a standard AR-15 buttstock on here. They tried to make the front handguards look as, as authentic as possible with the slip ring, uh, which would not be correct, but they got the look right. Nice lightweight profile barrel, three prong flash hider, has that you know early AR-10 front sight post on there. It just looks and feels amazing. The quality on these things is surprisingly good. Not surprisingly, I mean, Brownells is typically known for selling quality products, and I want to say that the manufacturer for these were, was probably something like Nodak Spud or something like that, because Brownells, I would imagine, would, had contracted with other companies to produce the parts that they sold under their own banner as the Brownells retro line. This gun ultimately would also have replica AR-10 magazines, the waffle pattern magazines made for it, and these are still available over on the Brownells website. And these just kind of complete the look of the gun. We were at Brownells uh, sometime in 2020, late 2020, and we were told then that they were going to discontinue the BRN-10. And once they sold through existing stock, that was it, there would be no more. And that was really kind of a gut punch to me because I just enjoy the rifle so much and I just couldn't imagine why. Why was it being canceled? And the only you know, answer to that question has to be lacking sales. And I'm just surprised that people weren't interested in shooting or owning a retro AR-10. Maybe I had the market all wrong. Maybe people only do care about the latest and greatest in technology and they don't care about the classics like this, which is really, really sad. But that presents an opportunity for collectors like myself. Because if you were keen enough to purchase one of these back when they were on sale for $11.99, you have a gun now that's worth over $2,000. I did a search just before coming out to film today's video, and I had seen one other BRN-10 available on the gun broker website a couple of days ago. It sold for over $1,800. There's one listed there now starting out at $1,800 with a buy it now of $2,200. That means that since the end of 2020, when this gun was canceled, 
it's doubled in value and it's only going to go up from there. So I really do think these are going to become modern collectibles. And if you can pick one up for a fair price now and tuck it away, it's only going to become more valuable. This gun is super lightweight, just like the original. So it feels surprisingly light for a 308. Uh, it has, uh, it's not a painful recoil impulse. It's just a big push and it's really, really pleasant to shoot. It has traditional AR-15 M16 type sights. You have an aperture in the rear and a front post out here in the front. The front post is not adjustable. So all the adjustments for elevation and windage are made back here on the rear sight. And it's just a fun, pleasant gun to shoot. We'll go for the 150 yard challenge target first. Let's try 200. I don't know what my hold is for 250, but we'll see if we can pull it off. We got quite a bit of wind out there today. Got him. Wow. I mean, this gun just shoots so well. That's 250 yards. What a great rifle. So pleasant to shoot. Yeah, I can only imagine what this thing would be like on full auto, <clears throat> but those were taken away from us in 1986. Yeah, such a beautiful gun. I mean, just take a look at this beauty. Definitely something a collector down the road is going to want to put in their gun safe for sure. All right, guys, so let's do a little bit of shooting at 200 yards. We have a downrange camera recording the uh, target. We have some 150 grain ball. This is American Eagle. It's from our friends over at Federal. They supply the ammunition to the channel for free and we wanna thank them for doing that. We're gonna fire 10 rounds because we are short on ammunition. We got some like 20 plus mile an hour winds going on out there. Let's see if I can figure out what my hold will be here for Mr. 200 yards challenge target. All right, yeah, I think I dropped a couple of those, but um, yeah, neat shooting little gun. Very, very fine sight picture. That front sight blade is very, very narrow. Kind of hard to see so narrow. It's kind of like a 1903 A3 Springfield in terms of how thick that front sight blade is. It's not even a post. Let's take a look inside the rifle here really quick to make sure that it's empty. Drop the magazine out of the gun, then pull that charging handle to the rear. Make sure your chamber is empty and then you can take it apart like a standard AR-15 M16. There's just a rear push pin. It will hinge open. Then you wanna break that bolt loose by pulling back on the charging handle. You can draw the bolt and carrier out to the rear. If you wanna take this out, it takes a little bit of finesse. You kinda of have to wiggle it out. There's the charging handle. Inside we have a standard AR-15 fire control trigger group inside there. So you can just pop that out and put a Geisley trigger if you really wanted to in there, but I wouldn't mess with it. I would leave it alone now that it's a modern collectible. The bolt looks really, really good in terms of comparing it to an original AR-10. You have the three vent holes there. It's much larger than a standard AR-15. Look at the girth of that bolt. That's a huge bolt. And it's actually really beautifully made. It's such a good looking rifle. And yeah, it's just, I can't believe they're gone. I think it's, uh, I think this gun's gonna do well in the collector's market, I really do. I, given the fact that they've only been off the market now for a couple of months and we're already seeing people paying $2,000 or more for them. 
uh, is a pretty good indication that the collector's market is going to view these quite favorably. Such a beautiful piece. Such a shame that it's gone. Well, guys, it's with a heavy heart that I bring the news to you that the BRN10 is gone. Now, the entire retro line isn't gone. The guys over at Brownells told me that there are certain rifles they will continue to produce, and hopefully they'll bring new products to market and keep testing those waters. The BRN10 is definitely gone, so this has become a modern collectible. But if I remember my conversations with them, rifles like the M16A1 replica, the XM177 E2 replica, those are going to continue on in production and they may add some different models down the road. Also, the BRN-180 will continue on. But if you want a BRN-10, the AR-10 replica, there's no time like the present to get one because they've already doubled in value based upon the two that I've seen for sale and only two on Gunbroker. So again, if you want one, now's the time to pick one up. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. We have a wonderful community built over there. There's a link down below. Click that link and become part of that community. You'll get early access to videos like this one. You'll have direct access to me. I answer all private communications. And again, we have that wonderful community for you guys to interact with. Also right here on YouTube, there is that little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Click that join button and you can support us right here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support, and we will talk to you guys soon.